Psalms 94 O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth. See Romans 12, 19, for God says vengeance belongeth to me. O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. And with this prayer, it's a prayer that's calling upon God to come. Calling upon the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Messiah. It leaps long over past the first advent into the second advent because the first advent, when he came, they rejected him. They will not have anything to do with him. They crucified him. That's what they wanted Jesus to do. He, they wanted him as the Messiah to come in and conquer the Romans. And sit up to be king and everything hunky-dory and the land be flourishing with milk and honey. And they were wicked and sinners exceedingly. Lift up thyself. Well, he did. When they stoned Stephen. He says, I see Jesus standing. Had the nation got right under the preaching of Stephen... History would be a lot different. At that point, 33 AD, thereabouts, if that's the date, you would have had seven years tribulation, 40 AD, a million years of the reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. We would be in the millennium. It's only been... Uh, 2014, well, less than 2014 years. We would be in the millennium right now. You see what sin does to you? For 2,000 years, less than that, 1900, it was 33 AD. I'm not that good at math in my head. Sin has caused the Jews to be set back, to be put off when they had their Messiah. Thou judge of the earth. Well, Jesus Christ is coming back as the judge with a sword in his mouth to proclaim justice. And those that will get by and get through the Lord Jesus Christ coming in the second advent and those that have done what they were supposed to by God. Render reward to the proud. And there's a nation that ever had a nation that was pride. It was Babylon in America. King Belshazzar sat one night and had a party with all the Lord's utensils in the temple. It's amazing how many churches are on the main roads of this city. You go down uh, Morris there, all the way to Port Orange, all the churches there. You go down Dunn, which changes all the way to uh, Main Street, all the churches there. And no one's knocking on your door and no one cares about your soul. But you can fill the yellow pages of, of names of churches and de denominations. We even see in a church today say, come on in, we're, we're having the fire revival. Liar. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? Read, part, read verse 4 with 3. How long shall they utter and speak hard things? And all the workers of iniquity boast themselves. They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and inflict thy heritage. How long? Does anybody know the answer? How long? I know how long. And I've got scripture to, scripture to back it up. The Bible records to the day when they see the Lord Jesus Christ coming back on the horse. And they take all their gods and they hide them. They throw them to the best. And they hide from the him that's on the horse. 
After that, they're not going to speak up. They're not going to have pride. They're not going to be arrogant. They're not going to be in triumph. The Lord Jesus Christ is in triumph. And he's going to put all the wicked in their place. Listen, even after the millennium, when, when God releases Satan for that, it's only a spell that he gathers a group of people, and then boom, they're just wiped out in an instant. Listen, you could you commit iniquity in the millennium. I guarantee it is instant judgment. And as the Lord Jesus Christ tells you, go jump into the lake. As that lake is down in the Dead Sea, Salipetra area of hell. You know, people say, and we had to say this weekend, hell on earth. You're right, but not now. You wait to the millennium when you see that lake of fire that's down in the Dead Sea. And then Lord Jesus Christ will tell you go jump, jump, the jump in the lake for your iniquities. That that would shut you up real quick. So there is coming a time when God is going to shut them all up, and there is another time that's going to happen: the Great White Throne Judgment. When God tells you to depart from His presence into the, the lake of fire. Into hell, the devil and his angels that was made for. That's it. You ain't going to say nothing else. You ain't going to murder nobody. And you ain't going to commit iniquity in hell in the lake of fire because that's why you're there. You are being cleaned in hell for your works and your sins that you have done that you thought was better than what God has done for you. Imagine all the people in Noah's time being baptized with fire after being baptized with water, which did not save them. Did you get that? They were baptized. They were put under the water during Noah's time. And they died and went into hell. And they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. They break in pieces thy people. The Bible says, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. O Lord, inflict thy heritage, the Jews. United Nations, all the nations around them, wait to see what the Antichrist is going to do to them. Out of Hitler. The Edomites. I mean, Babylon conquered, went in there and took them captive, but they did treat them with a little respect. They slayed a widow and a stranger and murdered a fatherless. Well, I want the widow there is the mother and then the children. Her children. Or it could be the widows and then other ch fatherless children. The stranger would be Gentiles. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see. The Lord doesn't know what's going on. They're saying that over America today. They don't care about what they're doing in sin. They're committing abortion and eh, God doesn't care. There is no God. All, all is well, there is no hell, they say. If there was a God in heaven, he would stop me from doing this. He would help me out. Neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. The God of Jacob. There's, there it is. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You take that, that Hebrew Bible you got and get it out of my face. Give me uh, humanism and give me, uh, give me a gun and give me Budweiser. Give me drugs. Give me a doctor. Give me health care. Give me everything. Don't give me that God in the Bible. Oh, but when this, when something happens, uh, tragically, earthquake, uh, tornado, or tsunami, oh, that, now it's God. Understand, ye brutish. People just vile. Understand, ye brutish. Understand means how to apply what you know 
and, and what your wisdom is. And usually it's applied to how you do to God among the people. And ye fools, when will you be wise? A fool says there is no God in his heart, Psalms records. A fool won't listen. A fool will not hear correction. You can give him 10,000 times something that is right for him to do and he won't listen. You can beat him with a rod, the Bible says in Proverbs. It won't matter. You know, the word of God has gone out in churches and streets and uh, meadows and wherever, wherever there's a preacher had a Bible brought. From Peter, James, and John, and Paul to today. And yet Jesus said, many will walk the broad way. Few will go into the gate of righteousness. You can't change that. You can't say revival and then, you know, and then we're going to change everybody. Everybody's going to get saved. You can't. Verse 8 says brutish and fools and the contents of, 90, of Psalms 94 if it's the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes, there are people who are murdering uh, widows and fatherless and there are brutish people and there are fools who are still saying there is no God when Jesus Christ comes. Even though they're worshiping at that time Satan who, who's going to be called the God of the forces. May the force be with you. Luke. And you got this mechanical man who who is going to speak. He that planteth the ear shall he not hear. Where'd you re where'd you hear that one? Exodus four eleven when Moses tries to cop out. How about planting the ear when Jesus is in the garden? You ever wonder how he did that? Did he pick up the ear and put it back on or he just grew a new ear? What, what, what was it? I mean, who cares about Jesus' birthday? I want to know how did that, did he, there's an ear. Or did he take that ear off the ground, wipe it off, stick it to his head without stitches and super glue and whatever else you can think of? How did that happen? Because the Bible says, who cares about birthdays? Two birthdays in the Bible, and a, a man was murdered. I keep on trying to tell myself, but I live in America. I'm sick and tired of birthdays. I'm sick and tired of it. The Bible does not honor birthdays. It should be a sin for a Christian to honor it. But this ear was planted. It's mentioned. It's followed with Jesus in his life in the ministry of, of a man who lost his ear because of Peter. How did God plant that ear? Plant it. You know what you do with seed? You either take seed and you put it in the ground. <laughs> he picked up that ear and put it where it belongs. Or it just grows. Shall he not hear? He that formed the eye shall he not see. How many blind people did Jesus give sight to? Let me ask you another question. I was blind and now I see. How many eyes did Jesus open up with salvation? From doing what God told him to do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. <coughs> Excuse me. And God opening your eyes. You know, if your eyes did not open, you didn't get saved.
If you didn't witness, you didn't get saved. That's the fruits of the Bible. That is the fruits of the Christian. Open eyes and desire to see one get saved. I don't even believe it was 24 hours since when I first made a public confession of Jesus Christ in my life on April 28th. That's the day I went to the church and professed. I was saved on Saturday afternoon. Next day I went to church, made a public confession in the morning that I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I went home and told my dad about salvation. I don't know how long it was after that. So there was something mentioned about visitation. And I went up to the pastor and said, hey, what's that? That's where we go tell people, we go knocking on the door. Hey, let's go. Uh, we go on a certain day. Okay, I'll be here. What time? And I haven't seen too many people saved. But there's a lot of people saved because the work that I planted, I watered, that God gave the increase. He that chasteneth the heathen shall not he correct. Chasteneth the heathen. That's not even God's people. In the Old Testament. Yes. Earthquakes, floods, drought, famine. Bugs, pestilence. Read your Bible. Today I read in Solomon. Solomon's prayer. Oh. Uh, Second Chronicles. See either nine or ten. God says, I will stop the rain. God said, if I send pestilence and all that, because you have sinned. And I'm not in the right place here. What are saying? He that teaches man knowledge shall not shall not he know. I got my education from Bible College USA. Really? You know where I got my education from? Yeah, I got papers for people who want to see my papers. People like papers, don't they? Newspaper or degree papers. The Bible that Jesus tells me and in, in, in the Gospel of John, the Holy Spirit teaches me. I've learned not from man. i learned from the Holy Spirit. Take that paper. The Holy Spirit teaches those. The Lord knows the thoughts of man. Uh-oh. So whosoever looketh upon a woman that lusts after her in his heart has already committed adultery with her. God already knows. Well, I didn't go to bed with her. I don't care. You thought of it. You watch that that stupid uh, ball game on the television. I'm a Christian. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. And that woman comes on to sell that booze. Oh, isn't she hot? Uh oh, adultery. God knows your real thought. Talk about murder. I wish he was dead. I wish he was dead. I could kill. Uh-oh. God knows your thoughts. You know, if you were not such a chicken, you know you would do what you think you would do? What did God say about man at the Tower of Babel? Man is capable of doing whatever he thinks he can do. Don't tell me no fear. Oh, maybe, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No fear, no fear, no fear. How many people are getting killed in schools and going to the courtroom and going to work or going to the mall? Many. Because you taught the kids no fear. So if I take my gun and go shoot a whole bunch of people, if I take my knife and go stab a bunch of people, I have nothing to fear. But fear itself, I think some idiot president said. 
Why are they doing it? Because I don't care. I don't need to fear. And if I go if I go to jail, I'll spend the rest of my life there because you're not going to give me the electric chair. You're not going to give me the needle. And I'll get free room and board. What do I have to fear? You've been teaching me. I come from apes. I come from spawns. Pond scum, there is no God. That's what you've been teaching me in the public school system. So why should I fear? I'm going to go out and do what I want to do. I want to make the video game real. So I'm going to go shoot everybody up. Thank you, Mr. Educated Teacher, Public School, and American Idiot that comes from a college. That's what you've been teaching the kids. And they are acting it out. Now, if you taught the fear of God and put the Ten Commandments in the classroom and put the Ten Commandments in the courtroom, it says, Thou shalt not kill. Uh-oh, I better not do that because I'm going to have to answer to a judge and to God the judge. Better not do that. What is going on today, the violence, is because that's what you've been teaching? And it's only going to get worse unless you repent and get right with God and shut every public school system down and make the parents raise their own kids. Stop turning them over to Pharaoh. Stop turning them over to the Roman government. God gave you the children. He didn't give them to the public school. They are vanity. Your thoughts are vanity. They're nothing. Why well, I think what we'll do is we'll have, we'll have hamburgers and hot dogs and we'll have a, a, a little concert and we'll bring all kinds of people to our church so people can know Jesus Christ. Vanity. You say, what do you mean with vanity? That's not found in the Bible. The Bible says, go ye in the world and preach the gospel. It didn't say sell hot dog, concert tickets, cortadas, uh, uh, spaghetti, meatballs, or anything. It doesn't say anything about that. Matter of fact, Jesus said when you fed the people, they only came after Jesus to get more food. And then they had a big debate about the manna. And rejected the bread of heaven, the bread of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, 666, John 666, some of his disciples even left him. And they were given food. John chapter 6. They rejected the bread of life. You got to feed the people spiritually. I'd rather see a person starve to death with, with the word of God in his heart, trying to win people to Jesus, trying to, to bring up a Christian nurturing right, die of malnutrition, go home to the Lord Jesus Christ, and have Jesus say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And stand before God, Jesus Christ, the great white throne judgment. <laughs> Excuse me, <Lord. laughs> I got that from the Baptist church. <laughs> what do you mean I'm not saved? I said this prayer. Excuse me. Oh, no indigestion from the spaghetti dinner we had all the time. <laughs> Thoughts of man are vanity. Oh, see what happened was over a billion years ago, out of nothing came something. Vanity. Vanity means nothing. How do you get something from nothing? Well, vanity, thoughts. If I get all this money, I'll be happy. No, you won't. Matter of fact, more money you get, the more money you got to get to survive to be, you think you're happy. Money you get, you got to have security. You got to have locks. You got to have lawyers. Blessed is the man whom thou chasteneth. Now, is he Hebrews, I think he's 13. 
A father that chases his son. God is not going to chase him for punishment for doing wrong to someone who's not his child. He said, well, what about these earthquakes and that we talked about? That's an act of judgment upon sin. But here's an act of judgment upon a son. Son, you've done wrong. I must chastise you because I love you and I want you to learn what, what is right and what is wrong. And God will not do that to Satan's children. If God chastises you as a son, guess what? He's your father. And he loves you. And teaches him out of thy law. Old Testament. Yeah, that can also be for the church age. God can use the law and say that's the violation you did. Even though you are saved. The law is good. The law shows us where we've gone wrong even though we are saved. Listen, just because we saved doesn't mean we go live a, 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 a sinful, worthless life. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covet goes just as strong since I've been saved in 1987. If I violate those laws that Paul writes about and Paul backs up with the Sabbath, doesn't say anything about the Sabbath, God is going to chastise me. If I commit adultery, you better believe God is going to go after me and there will be consequences. I'll lose my family. I'll lose my trust, my character, my ministry. All for what? God whipping me on the rear end saying, you were not supposed to do that. Because he loves me. That thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversary. Adversary. God chastising you will gives you rest. So when Satan comes up to you and whispers, oh, no, 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 not after what God did to me last time. No, no, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I may be prone to give in to that sin. Help, because I don't want the whipping again. Until the pit be dig for the wicked. Listen, you're going to have... We, we wrestle not against uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities and spirit. Our own self we wrestle against. The, flat, the spirit and the flesh is, is constantly in battle with each other. When the spirit says yes, the flesh says no. When the, when the flesh says yes, the spirit says no. That's going to happen until, the, until you go to your grave or to the rapture. For the Lord will not cast off his people. His people. That is eternal security to the nation of Israel. As a corporate body. Now Saul lost it. King Saul lost it. Samson with all the mess that he was in kept it at the end. I read where God says about uh, uh, Solomon. He is my son. Well, that's, that's adoption. Joab lost it. What about Jonathan? What do you think about Jonathan? Is he in heaven? You say, what was his sin? The same sin as many Christians today. He was a wrong, he was he died amongst the wrong people. And one of them was his father. And the other ones were his brothers. And he knew he was supposed to stay with David. And he even talked about David giving him a, a, a piece of the kingdom. But he had to go back to daddy. He had to go back to the sons who didn't want to have anything to do with God. And died. 
Where is his soul today in the Old Testament? So you don't have security. But as a nation, Israel is secure. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, those that, that did what God told them to do, those are under the law and died under the law after Moses wrote the, the law and did what God did, told them they're supposed to do, and they did it all the way to death. They went to Abraham's bosom. They didn't go to heaven. And there are some people in the, in the, in the Old Testament we read about, and it's like, well, where did they end up when they died? We read last of Demas, he forsook Paul, left and went to Thessalonica, and he's going to heaven. You didn't have that security in the Old Testament. What about the husband and wife that, that lied to the Holy Spirit in Acts? If they were saved, they're in heaven. Even though they lied to God and the Holy Spirit. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit today when you receive Christ as your Savior. And that seal cannot be broken. There was no seal in the Old Testament under the law. Neither will he forsake his inheritance. No matter what, there are churches out there that, take, that teach that God is done with the Jew. All through that is a lie that Satan wants to be very much true. Do you know that? Do you know ever since Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the 12 tribes, especially Judah, Satan would love to get rid of those Jews? He tried it with Adolf Hitler. He's going to do it with himself in, in, the, in the throne, in the, tabern in, the, in the temple. But there's still going to be that raiment. But judgment shall return unto the righteousness. Jesus Christ is judge. Does, does Paul not say we shall judge angels? Which angels are we going to judge? Those that fell for Lucifer. And all the upright in heart shall follow it. Those who want to do right by God are going to obey God's judgment. They may slip and fall because, you know, listen, all I've seen comes short of God. But there, you know, if you really want to do right, you can do right. And when you do wrong, you're sorry for it. You want to make restitution to God. Who will rise up for me against the uh, evildoers? Who shall stand up for me against the workers of iniquity. Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. No one would help. No one would take God's side. Who is on the Lord's side, Moses said, and the, and the tribe of uh, Levi stood up. Joshua, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. He said, listen, you can't serve the holy God. you got to get rid of those idols. We will serve the living God. And they didn't say anything about the idols, putting them away. Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. How many of the disciples were with Jesus on the cross? How many disciples were with Jesus when he was judged? By the Sanhedrin, and we was judged by the Romans. How many? How many? Tell me. How many? There's twelve of them. No, I'm not talking about Peter out there with the worldly fire. I'm talking about right there by his side, holding his hand. How many? Where were the disciples when they took took his body down off the cross? When I said, my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. God will keep you up. You're going to slip. But God will keep you standing. Don't you believe in your own strength. Don't you believe in your legs. 
There are plenty of people today, you know, they take one little fall. And something called the hip does something wrong. Oh boy, you're in trouble for the rest of your life. And I guarantee if they give you a new hip or give you whatever they do, I guarantee when the weather changes, you know. And I don't think that hip is completely like the new like your old one was. In the multitude of my thoughts within me. Thy comfort delight my soul. Of all the thoughts that you have, is your comfort in the Lord? Do you delight in the Lord's comforts? The good things that God's given you. I said today, you know, what would we do if we didn't have pain? Well, stop minding the pain and, and, and praise God for those things that are working and doing right in your body, in your life. Thank God that your checkbook ain't in a negative. You've got a car. You can see. You may not seem as good as you were as a kid, but you still can see. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? How many kings and queens of Europe will be with God in the, in the eternity? It's only recorded one queen ever when she was a queen. That was waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. And she said if he would come during her time, she would get off her throne and hand it to him. How many U.S. presidents will be in fellowship with God in eternity? How about that one? You know, we have not had a revival in this country since we've had a president. Check the records. As far as I recall, we've only had one Baptist president who didn't allow drinking. Mr. Baptist President, how come we didn't pass some laws to keep Jesus Christ? As a Baptist President, I would think that would add God and Jesus Christ to the Constitution while I had the chance. I had four years. So what? You didn't allow drinking in, in the White House. So what? What's that do for me today? They gathered themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemned the innocent blood. That's going to be Satan in the tribulation period. The throne of iniquity. He pollutes the, 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 the holy place, the most holy place. By sitting where he ought not, and Jesus calls it the desolation abomination. Uh, iniquity against the soul of the righteous. He wants to damn all those that are Jews and trying to do right and condemn the innocent blood, the Jewish blood that he's going to spill. But the Lord is my defense. And my God is the rock of my refuge. Remember the refuge I told you, I think last week? It's when you go running for shelter. When you run to God in trouble. When you are putting your faith and your reliability in God to protect you and to give you shelter from whatever you're going through. Listen, you could be in trouble if you're just going to stand there and take it and not run to God. God ain't going to come up and, and the Bible says you got to ask, seek, and knock. Knock, oh, knock on this fortress door. 
Opens the door. You gotta ask, say, can I come in? Seek. Okay, now I'm in. Where do I go, Lord? What room do you want me in? And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity. Those are the, the throne of iniquity. Those that are done wrong. Not the person that's run to, to God. And shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Satan loses. I've read that in the book many times. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. And when you read cut off, when you read in the law cut off, if that Jew did something and he'd be cut off from his people, you were done. That's it. There was no hope of getting back. Don't go to the temple no more. It ain't going to work. Even Saul put a little dramatics on with Samuel to put a show on for the people. That was it. God was done with them. Samuel said to Saul, your kingdom is done. I, I found a man after my own heart. Oh, can we go offer for the people? Put a show, put a show on. All right, but it ain't going to do you no good. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior.